So now we're going into my third favorite story in the game, Gamma's story. It's another story that's short and easy, but it's pretty fun. So it's definitely a lot more consistently fun than Knuckles' story. Excellent. Full systems, full power. And again, I love Dean Bristow's performance as Eggman in this game. Look at me. I'm your brilliant creator, Dr. Robotnik. You're the second of my E100 model machine. E I love Gamma's theme in this game. It's really Gamma. beautiful. I love how there's no lyrics in the piano and everything. Gamma. Right. You will now obey only me. <laughs> I love that animation. I don't know why they couldn't have continued the cutscene here instead of making you walk a little. Door. Your big brother, E101 Beta, Aww. is there practicing. He called him his brother. Enter Gamma. He's like he's You're treating his robot like a person. Is, but you'll do fine. How? How is Gamma less advanced than Beta when Gamma was made after Beta? Did Eggman not have enough materials at the time when making Gamma to make him as good as Beta? And so he had to make upgrades for him that he got later? That makes no sense. So this is Gamma's gameplay. Your timer is constantly running down and you gotta hold down the B button to target as many targets at once as you can to get as many seconds as you can. It's really satisfying getting a whole bunch of seconds at once. If you target just one of them, then you only get one second, which is really lame. And unfortunately, my biggest problem with the gameplay is that if you hold down B for too long, then the game will pull a screw you and cheat you out of targeting because it'll stop the targeting entirely and you'll have to try it all over again. So that's really annoying. Like, you want to keep on constantly moving forwards and targeting stuff and shooting so you Good can feel like job, a badass, Gamma. but you gotta you stop it. But you made me. Seriously, if you didn't think he had what takes, okay, why did he Gamma. activate him Here's at all? Your test. If you want to stay on board, you must be able to pass it, so pay attention to what I say. I'm going to walk in place for a few seconds. I feel like exercising today. The almighty egg carrier is a flying fortress that needs a good crew. Come forth, Beta. I'd like you to meet your older brother, E101. Just call him Beta. I am pity. The two of you against each other, and the winner serves on my ship. Rather than making use of both of you. But I owe you at least a fair chance. Normally, the boss fights of Gamma are ridiculously easy, because all you have to do is constantly, mindlessly shoot. But you want to get rings first, because you don't start out with rings. So I was overconfident there, like. I was trying to beat it without even trying by just standing still and mashing the B button. And a lot of boss fights in Game of Story, you can do that. But here, you don't start out with rings because you don't just walk into the arena and already have rings. So you've got to get rings first, or he'll kill you. So this boss fight isn't as mindlessly easy as most of Gamma's boss fights. So I died an embarrassing death there, but I wasn't actually trying, so... I had a funny feeling there was more to you than meets the eye. I hereby grant Gamma So he's essentially saying, you're not as worthless as I thought. What? So you want to come along with us, eh? How do you know that? He's not even talking to you. Okay. He doesn't even have any facial expression. We could always use a spare set of parts, I guess. You have special permission. That is pretty sweet, though. Like, he understands them without words. He kind of acts like a loving father figure to the robots, in a way. Because he understands them pretty well, and he talks to them in the tone of an affectionate father, calling them your big brother and stuff like that. 
But at the same time, he's also an abusive father because he's he has harsh punishments and he's controlling like an evil scientist boss would expect to be. I really like that. It sort of deepens his character rather than just having him be evil to his robots and that's it. He actually has attachment to the robots he put so much effort into building. These four robots originally had the same color as Gamma, with only their laser cannons being different. You can see proof of this in the tutorial for Gamma. It's a good thing that they made them different colors, because that would have been kind of boring and lazy. You, the elite egg carrier crew, are here today. To hear a very special announcement. Behold! It's a tailed frog! Very unique. This frog is absolutely vital to my plan. Why? I command you to locate this frog immediately! You hear me? Because I told I don't you to. Care what it takes to get it. Just bring it to me. What's going through these robots' head right now? Like, they're elite combat robots, trained to do combat things, and their first mission is being sent out for a menial task such as this. Like, do you think Eggman would at least tell them why? I mean, I guess he likes feeling powerful because they're just doing what he says without being told why. But still. Yeah, isn't this weird? It's not it's not like literally all of the people in Station Square are freaking out at seeing a robot. Some of them treat like some of them treat him like a regular person. Some of them just assume he's a guy in a costume, which makes no sense. And some of them some of them freak out, but others just treat him like normal. I hate being in the swimming pool area as Gamma because you can't talk to NPCs or pick up stuff if you're in running if you're in hovering mode like that but yeah this is pretty sweet there's all sorts of civilians that are actually pretty accepting of gamma although i don't understand why any of them would think he's in a costume because this is a world where eggman's robots are kind of a big threat so why would anyone wear a costume of a robot because that, that would just be begging for the police to go after they would just cause a false alarm. Why would anyone just assume you're wearing a costume? Plus he's got Eggman's black and red color scheme. I don't know. I kind of like Emerald Coast as Gamma, but my massive problem with it is that you can target random parasols and tables that don't actually give you extra time. Why does the targeting system think it's a good idea to lock onto these umbrellas that I don't want to? Getting the third emblem for this is a bitch because you constantly lock on to stuff that don't actually give you time and, you can, and you're only allowed to target things for a certain amount of time. So the targeting system is wasting time locking on to things you don't want to. Why is Takao giving a vision to one of Eggman's robots? Must determine location. Accessing data. Here comes one of my favorite lines in the game. No this one's hilarious. Found. Location unknown. This presents a problem. <laughs> I just love the performance of that line. But yeah, it, it makes no sense that Tycho's helping him at this point, because he's helping Eggman at this point. Why would Tikal give him advice on how to find Froggy and make chaos... I hate this cutscene. The child sound really annoying. And... It goes on for way too long. It makes me wonder why Gamma doesn't snap and start shooting them all. Like, you hear Chao singing a lot in the adventure games, and they usually don't sound this bad. They're not in harmony with each other at all. They 
These sound really annoying and I guess the being in the water is sing along with them. I like the part that comes after this though. <gasps> I'm sorry. I see you must not be one of them, huh? I love this line because it has a double meaning. It implies that not only is she talking about him not being an enemy, but he's also not like Eggman's other robots. These little creatures are too vulnerable without its protection. This protection allows them to continue singing in peace. Even I was surprised the first time I saw him. And he's just staring out in his face. He's not even looking at her. It seems his heart is closed off to us all. My true hope is that someday we'll understand each other. And I love this line too, because that could be applied to both her situation and robots and non-humans. Someday she hopes that maybe someday robots and non-humans and humans will understand each other. I just love that line. <laughs> and I love hearing the robots bickering in those. Like, they have robotic tones, but at the same time, it clearly conveys emotion. It's still so amusing having them bickering about which frog is the right one. Although, I'm not sure why they'd ever think that they have the right frog. Which is a stupid plot point. Why would he lose his tail in the first place? How could he lose his tail? And he's so happy by this that he starts shaking. Shaking is apparently how Gamma conveys emotion. Because God forbid they gave him facial expressions. This is a pretty poignant scene because it goes from Gamma working for Eggman happily to now Gamma's starting to see why Eggman's not exactly the kind of person that he should be working for. There's no way that all of those robots could have succeeded in their mission because there's four of them and one frog and yet Eggman scraps like Eggman punishes three of them even though they couldn't have possibly all completed the mission is this the Eggman one? is pretty evil in that scene and Gamma starts to realize that okay huh if you knew that that he was headed for the other door but he got spun over to this door. But if he knew that door wasn't the right one, why did he go into it anyways? Try to imagine this scene from the human equivalent of this scene. Try to imagine the human equivalent of this. You got Beta's torn up body on the floor. And he's up here being pinched by these things. And he's being altered. I just love his reaction here. Like he's backing away. And then you see a close up shot of his face. Like he's terrified. And you got the music and the camera perfectly working to create the atmosphere. And then he's just silent for a brief moment. This is the wrong room. <laughs> well, at least that provides some comic relief afterwards. But yeah, that's another really poignant scene in getting Gamma to realize that Eggman's not the kind of person you should be working for. Oh, well, I'm not sure why they'd have Beta... I mean, I guess it's supposed to be Beta was given the worst punishment because not only did he lose to Gamma, but he also didn't find the frog. But... He's being punished by being made a more powerful version of himself? Why? You'd think that would be a reward, not a punishment. Anyways, see you for the next part.